UW360 is proudly supported by BECU, a not-for-profit, member-owned credit union. Pacific Office Automation, copy, print, workflow, and IT, problem solved. Scientists from the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington set out for the North Pacific in search of rough weather, intense wind, and large waves. To study the balance of wind and wave energy, the goal to improve notoriously unreliable wave forecasts. So this project has been to study wave breaking in mixed seas, and that's uh, a sea that has both swell, has waves that are old and big and long, and then has waves that are, that are small, short wind waves that are made locally. There are very few measurements of waves in the open ocean. We don't really know how well the forecast models do. There's still a lot of room for improvement. Wave spectrum. Jim Thompson chronicled the expedition for the New York Times Scientist at Work blog. Today, we arrived at Ocean Station Papa, which is one of the oldest measurement sites in the world. Since 2010, we've had a mooring station Papa, our wave rider mooring. That's the mooring that we're here to recover and replace. During this experiment, the largest waves we saw were four and a half meters, almost five meters, which is still a very large wave and, and contains a lot of energy and is really representative of most of what's happening in the ocean a lot of the time. You know, the maximum winds we observed were 30 knots. Again, that's really representative of a, a rough day on the ocean. Until our mooring was deployed two years ago, uh, there were no measurements of the waves at Station Poplar. Over this two-year time series, we're, we're able to see what is the, the long-term result of this breaking process. And the long-term result is to keep the waves in balance with the winds. So when the winds become strong and a storm comes through, that's a lot of energy being put into the ocean. But a very large fraction of that is actually going directly into breaking. We call that equilibrium. On a day when we were taking a lot of data when there was good breaking going on, we would throw out two swifts and one of the small wave rider buoys, a swift. It's a buoy that drifts and moves with the waves. And the idea is to make all of our measurements in a reference frame that follows the waves. That's where the coupling of the swift measurements and the video measurements um, is really key. The key thing really is that the swifts can say what's going on in the water. They say this is what the turbulence is doing and the video that we take can say um, and this is what waves are breaking that have created all this turbulence. And the energy really is the key thing that we're looking for because when a wave breaks it loses energy. So as the wave is formed it gains energy from the wind. When it breaks it loses energy. So the net of those two things is what gives you a wave field a day later. Right? So if we want to improve a wave forecast for the Navy or for the Merchant Marine or for anyone, uh, we need to understand how much energy is going into the waves and how much energy is coming out of the waves. So we, and we need to be able to do that across all different wave sizes and shapes. 